Okay. So, as before we have an inner product space V over C and dimension V is P less than infinity. Okay. This is given last time quick, just a quick recap last time what all we did we proved we talked about orthogonal projection we said it is unique and exists it exists hmm, orthogonal projection it is a one such that the external vector minus the projection the error vector is orthogonal to the subspace constant. Suppose you are projecting a vector v on a subspace w then if the projection is called v cap then v minus v cap v cap belongs to w v minus v cap is the error that is orthogonal to w and this v cap is unique it exists and unique. The existence we proved by showing that uh, you can have a grass by grass point orthogonalization process you can have any orthogonal basis or orthonormal basis for w and using that basis we can work out a sum an expression which will give v cap in the sense that v minus v cap will be orthogonal to w that we have seen. We also show showed that uh, this orthogonal position is such that the error vector has the minimum norm squared. If you take any other vector say v prime in w any other vector and you take the error v minus v prime that error vector will have larger norm square or not larger norm than the one with respect to when we have uh, v minus v cap. Okay, that is why we always look for orthogonal projection because that gives the minimum norm error solution. You also showed that given a vector v its projection v prime is nothing but a linear operation on v the operation that of course, it is a many to one operation that informally I told. Okay. After that I went into direct sum decomposition of vector spaces where again we consider general vector space not necessarily an inner product space. There I said that suppose there are two vector space two subspaces w 1 and w 2 and they intersect only at origin at 0 vector then uh, w and then I write w 1 direct sum w 2 it means what if you consider a basis of w 1 so alpha 1 to alpha alpha r if you consider a basis of w 2 so beta 1 to beta l then you co combine the two basis alpha 1 alpha r beta 1 dot dot beta l space span by this basis is what is indicated by that. And they are in that space any vector is typically a combination of one uh, unique combination because of linear independence unique combination of one vector belonging to w 1 and the vector belonging to w 2. Then we consider the particular case where these two suspenses are orthogonal I brought in inner product space again they are orthogonal there is any vector and of course, when they are orthogonal again we prove that they intersect only at 0 and uh, orthogonal means any vector in w 1 any vector in w 2 they are mutually orthogonal the inner product is 0. In that case again you can write w 1 direct sum w 2 I introduce the notation of perpendicular along with that direct sum just to indicate that uh, it is uh, actually not ordinary direct sum it is orthogonal direct sum later I will drop that perpendicular thing we will always throughout the course we will be dealing with only orthogonal direct sum decomposition. But anyway again uh, w 1 direct sum w 2 in this case what again you form an orthogonal basis now we can talk about orthogonal basis of w 1 similarly w orthogonal basis of w 2 append the two I mean um, uh, take the union of the two hmm, and uh, span of that that is indicated by w 1 direct sum w 2 they are any vector of that space is nothing but a summation of I mean one component from w 1 another component from w 2. Okay. Then if on the direct sum any external vector is projected then we showed that the projection is nothing but summation of two individual projections one on w 1 another w 2 that happens only if w 1 and w 2 are orthogonal that is showed that day. And I also told you that instead of uh, I mean without using that grass speed orthogonal that exact expression to prove it that is suppose V is given to be not V W is given to be then then show that P W V for all V element of V show that this is nothing but P w 1 v plus P w 2 v you understand this notation right the projection operator with respect to subspace w that is that is nothing but summation of the two projections projection on this projection on this that was obvious when we consider the total basis of this space that was a union of the orthogonal basis here orthogonal basis here. So, overall projection was you can decompose into two part one correspond to terms from here another from here. So, that gives directly the two components even otherwise you can see just for mathematical exercise suppose you do not know that form even then you can easily prove 
that suppose this quantity I call small w 1 vector, this quantity I call w 2 vector. Then is it that this projection is indeed w 1 plus w 2 that means, is it that v minus w 1 minus w 2 this error is orthogonal to w that means, this w 1 plus w 2 which belongs to w is an orthogonal projection of v on w what I am saying is w 1 plus w 2 belongs to w is the error orthogonal to w if so or projection is unique this must be the orthogonal projection of v on w and that by definition w 1 plus w 2 that is summation of the two individual projection that is very easily seen any vector for any vector x element of w we have got we can write x as one combination uh, combination like this for x 1 x 1 belongs to w 1 x 2 belongs to w 2 in general is not it. So, I will consider any vector say x from w take the inner product of this with x is it 0 hmm. are you following na? is it 0 if it is 0 that means, this error vector is orthogonal to any vector on w which is orthogonal to total w right and that is very easily seen now v minus w 1 minus w 2 try to prove things in a more general way rather than taking that expression that is what I am saying you know that is even if we do not know the exact expression of the projection using the orthogonal basis or not you can still prove these things these are better proofs v minus w 1 minus w 2 and x is x 1 plus x 2 take x 1 inner product with x 1 this also you can write is not it that uh, you can decompose it um, you know that uh, we had done this axiom na, alpha 1 plus alpha 2 comma beta is alpha 1 beta plus alpha 2 beta if instead you have got alpha beta 1 plus beta 2 this also you can because you know this is nothing but conjugate of by definition and then apply linearity here again apply conjugate on each. So, it is linear in both is not it. So, here also I can decode I can take the inner product of this guy with x 1 this guy with x 2 this guy with x 1 means again I break this v minus w 1 with x 1, but v minus w 1 w 1 is a projection of v on w 1 subspace. So, v minus w 1 is orthogonal to x 1 and w 2 and x 1 w 2 belongs to this subspace x 1 belongs to this subspace they are mutually orthogonal that is 0. So, this inner product is 0 by the same logic the other one is 0. This is given I have told you now orthogonal this is given to us this is given w 1 that then only this formula is valid only when uh, what is what is it only when w r and w 2 they are mutually orthogonal then only total projection on w is a summation of individual projections on w and w 2 otherwise not very simple geometry suppose you have got two axes and there is a third vector in this world you are projecting on this space that is same as if the projection is this that is same as this component and this what is this component projection of that external vector on this physically you should be able to you see if you have got a vector like this if you project that on e this axis and this axis you will get the same intercepts and some of the two is this, but if the two vectors are like that angle is not 90 degree and you have got a third vector and the projection remains same that is not summation of projection of the external vector on this and on this ordinary engineering sense tells you and you can you see that there you can see things geometrically because this is your eye you have got your eye visually things are clear, but you see the way I have developed I have never used any geometry nothing just basic axioms that is the beauty na? so I can extend all geometric concepts or all, all the results in a more general case where there is no angle nothing. that is the beauty that they found out these basic things you know axioms that are necessary to get all those results and which are not dependent on physical parameters like angle and distance and length and all those. Okay. So, this is fine. 
Now, whatever we do now, these are very important. Na? Now, suppose within the V, I have got a set of vectors, not necessarily orthogonal. I have got a set of vectors u1, u say r, where each ui belongs to V. From V, I am picking up this u vectors, u1 to ur, r is less than p of course. Suppose I am picking up such vectors and they are li. Fine. I consider the span of this and that I call subspace u. Consider another vector, just one vector v element of v. Consider this vector v element of v. For the time being, you can assume to make life simple, v is not in u, that is outside u, but inside v. Otherwise, things become trivial actually. What I am going to prove or I am going to show it becomes trivial. Are you getting me? I put a, picked up a set of linearly independent vectors u1 to ur, r has to be less than p, less than equal to p, I am taking r to be less than p. So, that there is space outside u and still inside v, from which I am picking up a v, small v. Okay? Then, and I use uh, now one notation, you know, this notation without any comma, that only one element. So, this is not inner product, it might look same, but there is no comma, it does not involve only one, two elements. It involves one element means, like if I say V, it is nothing but writing span of V. It is because writing span of V means too many letters and you know, it takes too much space, but this comes very easily. So, when you have got only one element, Span of that I denote by this, but this is not inner product. Inner product was a had these two th symbols, but it involved two quantities and there was a comma in between that is not present here. Hmm? So, whenever I do this, this is span of this. Obviously, if small v is outside u, small v suppose not element of u, element of v. Then these two subspaces intersect. This I mean this two, v, small v cannot be part of u. That means these two subspaces can intersect at only at the origin, isn't it? Because this subspace means any vector here is either v or some multiple of v. If they intersect at any other vector other than non-zero, then that multiple of v is a linear combination of them. That means multiple of v or v for that matter lies in u, which is contradictory. You understand, isn't it? So, obviously, okay. you understand or not, this is uh, because the span is what, uh, any vector here is a multiple of v, if these two spaces intersect at any other vector, that is a multiple of v, also there is a linear combination of this, which means v is a linear combination of this, which means v belongs to u, which is not possible, is not it? the intersected origin. In that case, if I call w as, say first I inter, in, ensure that they intersect only at origin, they mutually disjoint except here. Then if I say, then I space I call w. Hmm? In that case, you all know, P w x for any x element of v, P w x will be, we have just said this in the beginning of the class today, P u x plus P v x. Projection on this, projection on this, there be, huh? oh just a minute, no not this is not true, because I have not yet shown that they are mutually orthogonal, unless and until they are orthogonal I cannot write that, sorry. I am going to do that, I am heading towards that, but I will modify things a little. This is suppose I am considering w like this hmm? and I introduce another notation here. First let me explain geometrically, suppose there is a vector v, do not confuse with this v, this is a separate story, say v. Okay, this is one space spanned by this element or maybe many, many elements, so I can do so like this. This space is say w. This space is W. 
So, projection of this will be say this amount, this is P w v. So, P w is a linear operator, give it any v P w v, for it has suspense w there is a particular projection operator P w that takes any external vector v gives you the corresponding projection. And this component is the error, there are two components projection projection error together if you I mean add them you get v. So, this component is what v minus which I can write as I, I means identity operator not matrix here, there is no matrix here is it identity operator, identity operator is also operator it takes any vector gives you the same one that is called identity operator. So, I can call it I minus P w And this i minus p w I denote as p w orthogonal, because this is also a linear operator. What does this do on v? When you apply p w orthogonal v, it does not give you the projection, but gives the error. So, I call it for orthogonal projection error operator, p w is the orthogonal projection operator, p w is the orthogonal projection operator, this is the projection error operator that is if you apply that on v, you get back not this, but the error very simple. I am using the notation otherwise every time i minus p w have to write things will become very clumsy and all that. Okay. You understand? Now, come to this with this notation that is only for notation come to this description. Here u and this span of v they are not orthogonal I agree. Yes, that is what I said. Okay. So, now come to this and here I have said that u and v, please understand this, this is uh, what we are discussing now, this is actually lattice filter and all that is still mathematically, hmm, this will come, this will be, this things will be used again and again, whatever they do now. This is given to me, but the two subspaces u and uh, span of v they are not orthogonal. So, I cannot apply that theory which I was doing erroneously here, but I want to write w now as orthogonal sum of two subspaces, which was not valid here. So, that any projection on w can be writable as a projection on one subspace and projection on the other subspace, that is what my game is. Okay. Now, the way to do it is this, look at this v vector, if this is your u, subspace u it uh, I am just schematically showing it is suppose you span by all these fellows u 1 to u r and your v fellow was here, this origin v fellow was here. What is w span of that is you take v and append v to all the elements u 1 to u r have a larger basis span of that, that is meant by this, that is the meaning of this is not it, you are taking small v because this is span of only one element v, so you are taking that v fellow v is the basis here for this aspect, you are taking v and appending it to the basis of this, I have a larger basis, earlier I had odd number, now r plus 1 number, take its span, that span is indicated by this. My claim is that span will be same as this, that if I take instead of v, suppose I project it orthogonally here and take the error, then span of v appended with that basis will be same as span of this guy appended with the basis physically you see. Why? Because this guy is a linear combination is, is an addition of these two. Okay? This guy is an addition of this one. This guy, this projection is a linear combination of u 1 to u r. So, this is nothing but a linear combination of u 1 to u r plus this fellow. That is v is p w v plus no, sorry, V is yes, P W V plus obvious. Oh, yes. oh, sorry, P U. I'm sorry, very sorry. I'm still having the W here. Now I'm carrying that W in mind. Projection here. It's U. P U V. P U perpendicular V. Fine. Now I want to retain this quantity. P U perpendicular V as it is. Hmm. And P u v is some linear combination of say some c i times 
u i vectors are equal to 1 to r. That means, if you consider any vector in w, please see, if you consider any vector in w, I am not writing everything matter here. I want you to hear out because you know that will be too much of writing or maybe I can write. So, for any for any y element of w, y is what a linear combination of y is like some coefficient say d i or say d j u i i equal to 1 to r plus some constant say k times v, is not it? It is a linear combination, but there this v fellow is again uh, can be broken like this one component here another component here this component can be written again in terms of u i s is not it. So, that means, for any vector y is what is a linear combination of the basis here and some multiple of this projection error. That means, if I consider this to start with you can call it say w prime, then obviously, this means w is contained in w prime, any vector in w is a linear combination of the basis of u and this fellow, is not it? And by reverse is true also. So, w is contained in w prime. On the other hand, I am not writing everything. On the other hand, if you take say y prime for all y prime element of say w prime, y prime is what a linear combination of the basis. I am not writing this statement, please see the logic is same. y prime is what belonging to w prime. So, it is a linear combination of the basis of u and some multiple of this, but this again is v minus projection and projection again is a linear combination of the basis of u. Essentially, y prime is a linear combination of v and the basis here, is not it? Okay. So, that gives rise to w prime contained in w, which means w equivalent to w prime. Are you seeing this or should I can you see the logic? I first start with w take any vector there is a linear combination of the basis vectors of u and so I first start with w prime or what I start with w take any vector there is a linear combination of the basis vectors of this and some multiple of v, but v is again a summation of projection and projection error. Projection error linear as it is projection is again a linear combination of the basis. So, essentially that element of w is nothing but a linear combination of the basis of u and this error vector, this error vector and basis of u. That means, that is contained in w prime, which means w is contained in w prime. I mean this time v was written as a summation and this on the other hand if I take a vector say y prime element of w prime, that is a linear combination of this, but what is this element? This element now will be written as v minus, earlier v was written as plus of these two. Now, this will be written as v minus the projection, but projection is again a linear combination of u, u i to u r. So, essentially net thing becomes a linear combination of u 1 to u r and this error fellow, sorry u 1 to u r and this v, because v minus projection, I am replacing the projection error by v minus the projection. So, essentially it is a linear combination of the basis of u 1 to I mean u, that is u 1 to u r and v. That means, that vector also belongs to w, that means w prime content in w in one case replace v as a summation of the two, in another case replace this as v minus v. Okay. But this is how the mathematical proof works. So, this content in this and this content in this that means they are same, but advantage is in this case the two subspaces are mutually orthogonal. So, if you want to take any external fellow say x and to project it on w, w or w prime is same, I have to project it on w if I use this form advantage is that projection will be summation of projection on this and projection on okay. projection on single component will be what I know the general expression 
when you have got so many I mean, I mean, orthogonal basis vectors, what is the projection? I know with each direction you take the inner product divided by the norm square of that vector times the vector. I have got only one element. So, projection of any x with this will be what? x inner product with p u perpendicular v divided by the norm square of p u perpendicular v into p u perpendicular v. Please understand things might start becoming complicated now. Any external fellow x if it is to be projected on this guy, it is only one fellow in a basis. So, what will that be? x there will be a constant. Now, what is the constant? Inner product between x and this guy divided by the norm square of this guy, there is a constant into this vector itself. Okay. And if u has an orthogonal basis, now you can assume that u has an orthogonal, this is orthogonal. So, projection on u can be easily evaluated using that expression. So, suppose you have already calculated the projection on u and you ask this question, I want to have an extra element v pushed in, so that my subspace is bigger than u. What is the new orthogonal projection? Suppose I pose this question, that is lattice filter actually. Order of betting, this is you know, I mean, suppose you will amount to say a pth order filter or rth order filter, I will bring in another element and if I have new estimate, estimate is orthogonal projection. Hmm. What is that? That is, see, I am just throwing hints here so that you understand that uh, I am not just showing math for math. So, new projection will be what? If I already know, the advantage is I already know the projection here on this. I do not have to recalculate it. So, previous estimate I have to just add an increment that is the extra quantity coming from this guy. That will be the new estimate. So, I can go on having more and more and more elements v, v prime, v double prime like that. And I have to just I do not have to recalculate projection on the this subspaces. Are you following? Hmm? Some tricks will be so this is very important then that W can now be written as never forget this eh? W can be because and do not ask me question on this later but on the two things I show now. W can then be written as u this actually this is orthogonal, but I am dropping the notation. I will drop the notation later because every time I do not want to write this orthogonal because in my life here every direction of decomposition will be orthogonal from now onwards. Hmm. Then span off. How to remember this thing? Take this orthogonal of with what? Take the projection on this P u, P u put an orthogonal sign. So, that will be pointing to perpendicular direction of u of that vector v. Earlier you had u, you wanted a external vector v to be appended to u and take the span of that and that you call w, w can be decomposed like that. Take u, go in the direction perpendicular to u, that is p u perpendicular v, that is v if you project in that direction. There can be many perpendicular directions, suppose this x is perpendicular could be this way, this way, this way, but you have got only one view, only one v. So, take projection on that and taking that direction, then that will contain, then that and this will contain v also. Are you following? Nah? The simple geometry, but only thing is without taking recourse to any angle, any length, anything. Simple algebra and few axioms. That is why all geometry concepts can be applied to functions, matrices, all vector spaces. You can define pseudo angle between functions. Here I will define, there is no physical angle. That angle notion, notion, notion also can be abstracted because this is very general. Okay. This is one thing you know. This can be that means P W X will be what? P U X plus P of x which means p u x plus this is called order update relation. You had odd number of terms, I added one more element. So, order if the number of term is order, order was r in u odd number of dimension was r, I added one more not odd number of terms, but r basis had odd number of terms basis of u, the dimension was r 
I added one more external element. So, now the basis has, I mean, uh, how many components? R plus 1. So, number of element, there is dimension. If in, instead of dimension, you call it order, say, using filtering, you are DSP language. So, order was R, order became R plus 1. Old projection, new projection. New projection in terms of old projection plus an extra term. This is called order updating the previous projection. This was previous projection. New projection is what? Your order updating. Updating, this is update term. Adding an update term to the previous projection, you get the new projection. Okay. Never forget this. I will take, I will use this many tips. Now, I will show some tricks on this inner product. Any vector, not necessarily here, any vector, for any vector, and that is why you should write maybe you suggest some vector, say for any x, y, suggest something. U, U, V, U, U, and you are, I have already used. U, V, W, I have used for any vector, uh, could be for, say for any alpha. Whenever you are uh, not happy with you know, English characters, switch over to Greek. <laughs> for any alpha, element of V, suppose you are carrying out an inner product like this, alpha with some pu perpendicular V. Then my first claim is, this pu perpendicular you can repeat on this. This is same as, if you repeat the pu perpendicular on this, and next claim is, you can drop this from here. Firstly, what does it mean? Alpha was just a free fellow, nothing to do with you and all, but you are taking the inner product with alpha and the projection error. V was another fellow projected on some u, took the error. Between them, you are taking the inner product. No relation, nothing. I am saying that will be same as inner product between this error and also if you now take alpha and project on the same space u and take the error between the two. And then I am saying this will be same as keep this error as it is instead of this just V. This is very simple, this simple geometry. Those who cannot see for them, I am showing. What is this? Alpha can be written as? Alpha can be written as you see very nice P u alpha and P u perpendicular alpha. Any alpha and any subspace u, you can show that alpha is nothing but a projection and the error. What will be the subspace? I can write. So, replace that alpha by this here. Here. P u alpha and P u perpendicular v will cancel because one is perpendicular, one is another is u. So, that means you, are, you will get this. Then you will get this. You replace alpha by this here and p u perpendicular v, p u perpendicular v and this fellow. This is p u, this is p u perpendicular. Immediately they will cancel. One is in u, another is pointing perpendicular, I mean perpendicular to u. So they will cancel. So you are left with only this fellow and this fellow. That is what it is. And then again here, p u perpendicular v, on the other hand, you can write as v minus p u v. V minus P U V, is it? Actually, these two, I mean, from this only, you can say the extending the result, interchanging the relation between U and alpha that way, some of symmetry, you can say. Like here from alpha, I put P U perpendicular alpha, but the same logic, I take out. But anyway, if you cannot see that, you know P U perpendicular V is again, original V minus the projection. So, replace this by this. Replace PU perpendicular V by this. And what happens immediately? One is PU, another is PU perpendicular. They cancel. So, you are left with PU perpendicular alpha with V. Hmm. This is not only true for projection operators, you know, in general, any Hermitian, if it is a Hermitian operator, in the case of Hermitian matrix and all, this will be true. There is some operator called Hermitian operator. Maybe I will touch on it later. Projection operator is actually Hermitian operator. If you see this matrix form, the matrix is Hermitian matrix, has to be. And this is. No, no, later, later, not now. I do not want to take to the specific form of uh, that matrix and all. This is very general vector space. All x, y, z, alpha, beta are abstract symbols. No, in, no relation with physical entity, is not it? So, I will make this kind of manipulations time and again. That is, I have got this, I will shift from this to here, or I will make repetition, this kind of thing. 
in a specific context of vector space. This is a very general case. Okay. Now, after this, I come to our real thing. We will be dealing with in this course vector space of 0 mean random variable. That space, if you take up any two random variables, say x and y, random variable means there is a probability density and all data in the background. Because when the, whenever you bring in the name random variable, I know all the stuff that goes with the definition of random variable. But it is a vector space in the sense that what is the meaning of then x plus y? What is the meaning of addition, rule of addition here? It means x plus y by this I will assign it to another variable whose value will be what? Every time you are conducting experiment, you are finding some value of x, some value of y. So, just add the value assigned to a variable. That variable I will call z. So, here is the z will be I will denote that by z. So, z will be denoted as x plus y because every time you conduct experiment, you add the find values of x, y, add them, you get a value of z. That is what is meant by z equal to x plus y. But z, z is also random. So, z is also belonging to the same set which I started with because I consider the set of all possible random variables, is not it? So, it is closed under addition for any x and y belonging to that set, x plus y belongs to that set. Same for c into x, c into x understand na? c is a constant. Every time you measure x, find the value multiply by scalar c assign it to say some z. So, z also is a random variable. So, it belongs to the same set. What is a 0 random variable? There has to be a 0, is not it? So, that what is a 0 random variable? It is such that when you add to another random variable, every time its experimental value turns out to be the only the value of x. That means, 0 random variable is one variable which always takes 0 values in all experiments. Then you, can, then you can ask the question as to what is it that I told earlier. Uh, what is it, uh, how is it that uh, this random variable which always takes only one value, then what is random about it? To answer that for uh, this uh, mathematicians or math stats fellows, they said it is a random variable which takes uh, this value 0 is probability 1, impulsive probability. Integrate is 1, probability could be a delta function, that kind of thing. These are all mathematical uh, things that they set, so that you know things are correct and one can proceed. Then what is the negative of a random variable? Obviously, you take any value of x, whatever is coming, negate the value, give it to a variable. That variable will include the negative of x. So, obviously, when you add that 2, you get 0. So, you get the 0 random variable, or 0 vector. Okay. And since this also is a random variable, negative of that, it also belongs to the original set. Okay. Similarly, for the scalar multiplication, those rules are obvious. Scalar 1 times any random variable will give you the same random variable. So, 1 alpha is alpha. Then you remember C 1 plus C 2 into alpha, that is trivially obvious C 1 alpha plus C 2 alpha or C into alpha plus beta C alpha plus, is not it? All those things are, so it is a vector space, is not it? So, here I can take any two, any few number of vectors, odd number of vectors, I can define the linear independence, dependence always the same manner. But those additions are mind you, additions means, always means like there is an experimental experiment going on, there I am getting the numerical values those values are added every time and the result is formed, that result is made by the linear combination. Okay, that is the physical meaning of the addition there. Okay. Then not only vector space, I will introduce inner product there and this will be called Hilbert space, Hilbert space of random variables. Inner product I will define x and y as and they are in general complex value. Da? the correlation between them and correlation covariance are same because they are 0 mean. You can easily see it satisfies all the four axioms of inner product. Firstly, instead of x, it is x 1 plus x 2, you can separate out linear in first coordinate. If x, it is c times x, c can come out because after all this is nothing but multiplying by joint density and integrating. So, c can come out of the integral. Hmm? Then x y and y x they are conjugated of each other you can see. How? y x means e of y x star. Is that conjugate of e x y star? Little little extra mass is required. What is e x y star? See you have to be like think like a math mathematical logic should be correct. e of x y star means you are multiplying this by a joint density and e y x star means again multiplying by the same joint density, but joint density is a real function that is why it will happen. 
at least see one, one layer below and see the logic. You are multiplying by the joint density and integrating. You get this. Y x means E y x star. So, again y into x star you are multiplying by the joint density and integrating. Since okay. joint density is real, this inter, uh, integral will be what? Just conjugate of the previous one. If joint density were a complex function, then this would not, wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't be conjugate because p remains, joint density remains itself, it does not get conjugated in this process. Okay. Not understanding. But if I am multiplying this by joint probability density integrating, next time I will take y into x star multiplied by the same joint probability density and integrate. These two are conjugate of each other because joint density is a real function. So, when you conjugate the first integral, joint density can remain as it is. Do not jump at whenever you have to you see the mathematically, because joint density is a real function, even when the variables are complex, probability is real. Okay. Hmm? And last one is last one is very important inner product with itself that gives you E of mod x square, which is real, non negative, which is called the variance. I also indicate by norm square, real and non negative and equal to 0 means only when expected value of mod x square is 0. That is, is possible only when x takes always 0 value, then only expected value is 0, because mod x square expected value 0 means you cannot have that x sometimes take positive and sometimes negative average is 0, because I am mod x or mod x square rather. If that is 0, then x has to always take 0 value only, there is no escape. So, x is the 0 random variable. Okay. With respect to this, then I can have orthogonal sets and all that. So, that means two random variables are orthogonal means they are uncorrelated because correlation is 0. So, previously I used to call them uncorrelated random variables. Now, they will be called orthogonal random variables, but provided 0 mean because actually uncorrelated means E of x y is E x into E y or E of x y star is E x into E y star that is uncorrelated, the covariance is 0, then I am saying 0 mean, that is why E of x y star is 0, orthogonal means is 0. So, the two things coincide when they are 0 mean and I am always dealing with 0 mean cases. So, uncorrelated random variables and orthogonal random variables in our case are same. Okay. Uh, quickly, quickly. Uh, huh. What is the constant term? Constant term, so mean is what is the mean of constant term? I am totally dealing with 0 mean cases. So, you cannot have a constant term. Constant but I am dealing with 0 random variable. So, constant case does not appear. There is the answer, constant case does not appear, constant you give me that I am not taking, I am taking 0 mean case, because variance means you have to take difference from the mean, not the square of the square constant value and you get all some value not that. I am taking 0 mean cases, that is then only I am calling it variance and all that. Uh, suppose they are not 0 mean, E of mod x square is never the variance, you understand that is the answer. When they are 0 mean, then only I, I give, go forward, one step forward, call it variance. Mm. Give it a name variance. Uncle but if a. Uh? 0 mean uncorrelated means x is orthogonal to y. Ha. Orthogonal means uh, this inner product 0. Yeah. Uncorrelated means this is equal to E of x into Ui star. But if they are 0 mean, that uh, both the things are same. Okay. Now, consider that optimal filtering problem which we dealt with. Sir, won't the axioms hold, like all the inner product axioms hold even if they are non zero and they are not 0 mean? Hmm? Won't the four axioms hold if they are not? No, they, they, they hold. Whether they are irrespective of 0 mean or not, the axioms will always work. Yes. Okay, okay. But I am, I want orthogonality and uncorrelated to have the physical meaning actually. Orthogonal means, just orthogonal okay. But if it is 0 mean, they also mean uncorrelated. Then there is a physical meaning that comes out. Okay, random values which is no correlation amongst them and all that. That is why I am, I mean have that physical thing, you know. Otherwise, un or, or it is pure mathematics, orthogonal means correlation 0. But if you make it 0 mean, it is also uncorrelated. So, uncorrelated has got a solid physical meaning. 
then okay, two variables are uncorrelated. They are varying purely randomly without any relation between them. And I want to make use of that so that you get a physical meaning of say white noise, other things, you know, head process. Okay, now come back to this uh, optimal filtering problem now. Forget about all our derivation of winner filter and all that. Hmm. If you have a class, you can go. Suppose you have got one random variable at this space, I will denote by h, Hilbert space of all 0 mean random variables, this random variable. Huh? Suppose you have got a vector d n and you have got a space spanned by some elements dot dot dot. This say u n is a span of, I am introducing a notion in n here because again everything time is coming, na? u n is a span of some data sequence x n each is a random variable forget about n for each n this is a random variable means one vector this is one vector this is one vector and assume there is no linear relation between these random samples but they are linearly independent when you get purely random data there is no linear, linear relation between them so they are linearly independent so that they form a basis of u n and that u n is this And I want to estimate d n as a linear combination of these fellows, but estimate should be based in the sense that the variance of the error should be minimum. Error power should be, but variance of the error means non square of the error. Non square of the error minimum means this linear combination has to be the orthogonal projection of d n on u n. So, essentially, I have to find out orthogonal projection of d n on u n. So, I to find out this guy. I am not putting a d n here uh, to indicate their vectors also. The actually they are scalar, but in a vector space treatment they are to be treated as vectors, <coughs> a, abstract vectors. This have to find out. That will be what? That will be such. Now, if they were orthogonal, suppose they are orthogonal, then that projection is finding is very easy as I did with Gorgas mid case. Take everybody, anyone, inner product between the two, in fact inner product of d n itself. I gave you that expression of orthogonal position. Dn itself with any of them divided by the non square of that times this, and same for all if they are orthogonal. But they are not orthogonal. Let us filter orthogonalizes a set in a Gram Smith manner. That we will see. That is filter will generate orthogonal sets out sequence out of this. That is un uncorrelated sequence. You can also say generate white sequence. You can use you can take a correlated sequence make a generate a white sequence out of it uncorrelated uncorrelated means white hmm. all those things I am just dropping hints this have to find out but when they are not orthogonal then I, do, I cannot use that formula then how to use I only know this should be such that the error is orthogonal to the entire u n what is the error error is this so that is d n minus Some components I write like that linear combiner coefficients instead of writing w0 x n w1 x n minus 1, I start with w star because there is does not matter, nice. it is a constant only instead of w. My notation is w star. You remember the way I did complex LMS algorithm and all. Okay, so that same thing you know, w star w0 star w1 star dot dot. So, this w h x n vector, I do not have to give you new definition of x n, we have all done this again and again in our LMS case, the same thing. This is your error vector. This is the error, and the error must be orthogonal to the entire space. If that is satisfied, then this will indeed be corresponding to orthogonal projection, is it? Error orthogonal to the entire space means error orthogonal to individual basis components. Then it's ensured. That means. If I take E n not E n just a minute. Hmm. 
if I take say x n now x n minus say any element x n minus i with e n that should be 0 for i equal to 0 1 dot dot p is not it. So, I put the inner product in a vector form in a, uh, that is inner product of e n with like I mean if I take uh, what is the meaning of this expected value expected value of this into e star n 0 for i equal to 0 for i equal to. So, I can always this means e of e star n I can also write as e h n 0 vector. Now, it is statistics no longer vector space. I am putting this all the inner product every inner product in the correlation form. Instead of taking individual element I am putting a vector here e, what is the vector first element is x of n e of x of n e star n then next element here is e of x n minus 1 e star n like that all the inner product. Is it difficult to see? I am not showing those intermediate steps. Sorry, this will give rise to what? E of x n e star n 0, e of x n minus 1 e star n 0, e of x n minus 2 e star n. So, I am just writing the same that thing in a vector form. Okay. Now, it is no longer vector space, it is simply correlation. And E h n is what? You will take E h n. So, h on this, immediately you get d h n or d star n and x h w put that here and what do you get e of that is equal to 0 and we have to simplify 0 is there on the right hand side e of x n x n into e h n e n is this h of this you replace here h of this. So, d h means d star d is a scalar. So, minus the other term other term h of this means x h w x h w and x already take that to the right hand side or left hand side whatever that is x n and w can go outside because it is not random. Okay. This is autocorrelation matrix r this is the vector p and r w opt. Okay. This is what is it? It is we are do, that time we are minimizing variance explicitly and all that, but that will give you nothing but orthogonal projection. Projection is unique. So you get back your winner filter. But that time we didn't know vector space, so I had to do all that stuff. But anyway, that time we learned this matrix differentiation and all that. So I stop here today. From here I'll go to the linear prediction thing. Please refresh your mind with today's lecture. In fact, today and last lectures, you know, because uh, those are the lattice relations, linear prediction, lattice relations. Okay, thank you very much.